Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse, as it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Now Paul is here contrasting what he just said in the previous verses about faith like Abraham, how Abraham believed God and God counted him to be righteous because Abraham didn't do anything but believe in him. You know, Abraham lived before there was any law and so Abraham didn't have any law to keep. He didn't know about the law. There wasn't any law. So he just believed God and it was counted to him. God said, now you're righteous because you believed me. And he, Paul contrasts that with uh, people who try to trust on uh, trust in their keeping of the law. Uh, verse 10 says, as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. The Amplified Translation says, everyone who depends on the law. The Beck Translation says, there is a curse on all who depend on doing what the law says. Now this might seem shocking to you. How can he say there's a curse on everyone who tries to depend on the law? Well, he uses the law to prove it. And he quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 27. Uh, the last verse in chapter 27 and the beginning of chapter 28, he quotes and says, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Now this is a reference back to the book of Deuteronomy in which God lays out the law. Let me turn back just for a moment and read this to you. Chapter 27, verse 26 in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 27, 26 says, Cursed be he that confirmeth not or continues not in all the words of this law to do them. Chapter 28 begins this way, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all His commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations. And then he continues on for about, oh, I'd say about 14 verses describing all the blessings of a person who is obedient and hearkens diligently and observes to do all. And the emphasis must be on the word all there. You have to observe to do all that's written in the book of the law. Then all these blessings, 14 verses of blessings. Then in verse 15 he says this, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe to do all his commandments and statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses will come upon you. There were 14 verses of blessings, and there's about 60 verses of curses, far more curses than blessings. So the whole thing hinges on whether in the law, whether you keep and observe everything that's written to do it. Uh, how many messages have I heard based on Deuteronomy 28? And uh, uh, we've heard preachers say, you've got to be diligent, and you've got to listen, and you've got to observe. You know, Paul is saying that if that's the way you approach God, then you're automatically on the curse side. That nobody gets the blessings by Deuteronomy chapter 28. Because, he says, here's Paul's logic, let me read it to you again. As many as of, are, are of the works of the law are under the curse. Or in everyone who depends on what I just read from Deuteronomy 28, everyone who comes to God that way is cursed, or under the curse side, because here's what Paul bases it on. It's written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things, written in this book of the law to do them. Now Paul takes it as a given fact that nobody has observed everything, that everybody's guilty somewhere, that everybody has failed at some point. He, then he even says in verse 11, that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It's evident, or it should be self-evident, or it's plain. Because, and then he quotes from Habakkuk, he says, the just, or those who are righteous, live by faith. In other words, well, and then in verse 12 he says, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. That's a quotation from Leviticus 18, verse 5. So Paul is setting up a contrast. He's saying, look, uh, if you want to believe what Habakkuk says, Habakkuk, sa Habakkuk says, the one who is righteous with God is righteous by faith. Uh, or you can try to approach God through the law, and the law says you've got to keep everything that's written in the book of the law to do it, or you're under the curse. And then he quotes from Leviticus 18.5. He says, uh, the law has nothing to do with faith, because Leviticus 18.5 says, uh, the person who observes to do everything that's written, that's the person that will live. So it's a little bit like this. If... Uh, uh, if you want to try to get to God or to be righteous with God, you've got to keep all the rules perfectly without making any mistakes, or you can trust Him, like Abraham did. Abraham was an example of a person who believed God and was counted to be righteous, and the law played no part in it. I use this illustration sometimes, but let me try it again with you and see if you can understand it this way. Uh, in this hypothetical, imaginary fairy tale story, let's just imagine that we are standing on the bank of the ocean. Uh, here, I'm here in the United States, so let's just say on the east coast of the United States, and then... God's law comes to us and He says, I require you not to be where you are, but to be where I require you to be, which is in England, across the ocean. So God's law has come and He said, where you are is not good enough. You've got to be where I command you to be. And it's 
in England, across the ocean. So naturally, if that's all we've got, we just dive in the water and start to swim. And we're going to try to observe, to do, and to keep everything God requires. But you know what? I don't know how good a swimmer you are, uh, but no matter how good you are, you might be a better swimmer than me. But neither one of us is going to swim across the ocean. You might get farther than me, and I might get farther than the person next to me, but none of us is going to arrive at what God has commanded. So we swim out as far as we can, and then we fail, and we fall back, and we make these, these promises, well, I'll try tomorrow, and I'll do better tomorrow, and I'll turn over a new leaf, and I'll redouble my efforts, and I'll really put myself into it. Next, The next day we put ourselves into it, and we fail again. And we keep this up and keep this up until somebody finally gives up. Now, it's a beautiful thing when, when, whenever you finally give up. It's, it's actually a good thing to give up. And finally, when somebody gives up, they notice something they never noticed before. When finally you say, I can't do it, I can't get to where God wants me to be, you notice that behind you there's an airport, and there's a 747, an airplane, and Jesus is the captain, and He's got a captain's hat on. And Jesus says to you, when you've finally given up on your efforts to make yourself right with God, to get to where God requires you to be, Jesus says, if you'll trust Me, I will take you, I, will, I Jesus, will deliver you across the ocean and present you to God where you need to be. So you can either try to do it yourself and fail, or you can trust Jesus and He brings you across. That's why Paul is saying here, the law is not a faith. See, you can't. he's saying you can't get there by your own efforts. You can't get there by trying to make yourself better. You can't get there by trying to observe the law. In fact, if you do it that way, if you try to come to God by observing the law, he says you're automatically under the curse because you can't make it that way. And when you fall short, you fall under the curses. But the beautiful, again, the gospel is a beautiful message. It's full of good news. There's no bad news in it at all. Verse 13 says this, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. He says, Jesus has, you know, we've all, because we've all failed based on the law, uh, we all legitimately should be under God's curse. But he says, Jesus has saved us, or Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Notice that the curse is in association with the law. The law brings only curse. The law brings only wrath. The law brings only judgment. The law can't do anything for you but put you under God's curse. It can't do anything for you except separate you from God. That's why a Christian should stay away from it. That's why Christians are being warned by Paul in this book of the Galatians not to try to relate to God by commandments. The law produces only cursing and judgment and wrath. But he says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Here's how he did it. He was made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. He said, Jesus saved us or redeemed us from the curse of the law. See, the curse of the law is what we deserved. But He redeemed us by taking in Himself what we deserved. And, uh, you know, the curses that we deserved fell on Him. You, know, I, I, you, you may not have ever thought of it that way before, but Jesus, when He was on the cross, He was cursed by God. He took all the curses of the law. You know, Jesus in His life, uh, the reason that we can say the law is fulfilled in Christ, in His lifetime, Jesus lived the perfect law, uh, the perfect life required by the law. Jesus is the only one who fulfilled the law. He lived the perfect righteous life that the law demands and fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law in His life. And in His death, He took in Himself all the curses of the law. So Jesus, on the one hand, fulfilled the righteous requirements of the law, and on the other hand, fulfilled all the curses of the law. So Having fulfilled all of it, God now folded it up and put it away. And He says, now I will make a new covenant with mankind in the blood of Jesus. So if you put your faith in Jesus, who fulfilled the Old Testament law, Jesus has fulfilled all the requirements and everything that God requires. If you'll put your faith in Him and trust Him, you get all the benefits of everything that He did for you. You have a relationship with God as though you had done all those things that you could never do for yourself. Jesus has brought us into that relationship with God.